What's up YouTube, it's Borat back at it again with another video. In late 2021, I made what might be the largest single purchase that I've ever made in my life. When I spent around $16,500 on a 140 terahash Antminer S19 XP from Compass Mining that is set to come online sometime around August of this year, 2022. While it is a really expensive purchase to make, I do think that Compass Mining is the best way for retail investors like you and me to get exposure to Bitcoin mining. That being said, if you don't wanna make this heavy investment in Bitcoin mining and you are truly a beginner trying to invest small amounts of money, I will have some alternative options for you towards the end of the video. So definitely stick around until the end if that describes your situation. For everyone else, in this video, I'm gonna be doing a review on what Compass Mining is. I'll be talking about what different payment methods they accept. I'll go over some of the risks associated with Compass Mining and mining in general. And then finally, I'll cover some of the difficulties and nuances that you should be thinking about when you go to make the decision about whether mining is right for you or not. And then finally, for the sake of keeping this video short, I'm not gonna be including any analysis on dollar cost averaging versus Bitcoin mining, which I think is the big question that everyone should be asking themselves. Is Bitcoin mining actually just going to outperform your regular dollar cost averaging strategy? If you are interested in content like that and any sort of high level analysis about dollar cost averaging versus Bitcoin mining, definitely go down below and leave a comment and I'll start working on a video to sort of synthesize my thoughts on that topic. Go down below and smash the like button for Bitcoin mining for beginners and let's level up your brain. So first of all, what is Compass Mining? Compass Mining is a marketplace that matches retail buyers like you and me with authorized ASIC sellers and vetted hosting facilities. So basically you buy a Bitcoin miner, also known as an ASIC, from the Compass Mining marketplace. Compass does all of the logistics to take that ASIC and strap it into an existing Bitcoin mining operation. And then you get charged a fee for the service of basically getting your miner hosted at this existing Bitcoin mining facility. So why is this good? It's good because you own the Bitcoin miner, which means that if at any point you are unsatisfied with the service, you actually have an asset, that ASIC, that you can sell back on Compass Mining or through any other sort of ASIC marketplace. And if you live in an area where electricity is too expensive for you to actually be Bitcoin mining by yourself, you're getting to take advantage of lower prices at hosting facilities that are already profitable. So Compass itself sells some of the ASICs that are listed on its website. And Compass is actually giving you the best price available if you look at miners that are listed by Compass versus miners that are listed by some third party authorized reseller on the Compass platform. And this is probably because those authorized resellers, they're probably not ordering ASICs in the same amount of bulk as Compass Mining is. And so they're unable to or unwilling to pass on that savings to you, the customer. And therefore, when you're buying through an authorized reseller, you're getting worse prices than if you had bought an ASIC that was listed by Compass Mining itself. I have no affiliate relationship with Compass Mining. I just think they offer a really unique and compelling product. And in my opinion, it's the best way that I have seen so far for retail investors like you and me to get access and exposure to Bitcoin mining. I've previously dabbled in cloud mining and other Bitcoin mining alternatives. And if you're interested in my thoughts on any of those options, I'll leave a link up in the cards to a video that I did a few months ago where I explain my thoughts on some of those products that I have used previously. But needless to say, I find Compass Mining a much more compelling product than any of those options that I had looked at in the past. Also, I'll have a link down in the description to an interview with the CEO of Compass Mining, Whit Gibbs, where he talks about the company mission and how they run their operation. Definitely give that a listen if you are looking to learn more about Compass Mining in general, if there's anything that we don't cover in this video that you wanna learn more about, and you'll be able to get that information directly from the people that are running the operation. The biggest issue that I was facing when I was going to purchase a miner through Compass Mining was that there was a very low supply of ASICs that were being listed by Compass Mining that had that really low price per unit that I was looking for. I would see a unit that I really wanted to buy, and I would start thinking about getting my money together for the purchase, and then when I would go to look the next day that ASIC had already been purchased by someone else and was no longer available on the marketplace. So next let's talk about the different payment options that Compass Mining offers. So hopefully you can be a little bit more prepared than I was when you go to pull the trigger on an ASIC that you find that actually fits what you're looking for. Compass Mining offers two different payment methods for you to go ahead and purchase one of the ASICs that's available on their website. The first method is via wire transfer from your legacy bank account. And the second option is via crypto. For the pros of the wire transfer, you're not obviously incurring any capital gains when you're making a wire transfer. Whereas with a Bitcoin transaction, you're potentially paying capital gains based on whatever the cost basis of the Bitcoin is that you're sending over to Compass Mining. Obviously the cons of the wire transfer are that wire transfers can be pretty expensive. With my bank account, wire transfers are about $30 per wire transfer, which is obviously a lot more expensive than just sending a Bitcoin transaction. On top of that, you can only send a wire transfer during business banking hours, which for a lot of us that are working nine to five jobs means that you have to be making this wire transfer during the time that you're actually supposed 
to be working. And the people paying with crypto obviously can buy up the miner that you're looking at during nights or weekends or holidays. As for crypto payments, Compass Mining accepts Bitcoin, USDC, and Tether, as long as the USDC and Tether are hosted on Ethereum's ERC-20 token platform. USDC and Tether might be ideal because you're not actually going to be experiencing any capital gains when you're transacting USDC and Tether because the price is fixed at that $1 versus Bitcoin, which goes up and down against the dollar. However, depending on where your USDC and your Tether are hosted, you might end up paying some crazy Ethereum ERC-20 gas fee to transact your USDC and Tether, in which case it might be cheaper to actually just send a wire transfer. And then obviously Bitcoin's fee is probably going to be lower than your wire transfer fee and then your ERC-20 gas fee, but you could end up experiencing some large capital gain depending on what your cost basis is on the Bitcoin that you're sending. So there isn't one payment option that's really like definitively better than the other ones. There's definitely pros and cons to each payment option. You just have to sort of weigh that for yourself and decide what is the best way for me to quickly execute on this transaction when I find an ASIC that's available on Compass Mining that I really want to purchase. And then I'll throw some screenshots up here for you guys just to give you a little bit of a better visual on this. But it seems like the option for wire transfer is only available for miners that are hosted by Compass Mining. And so if you're buying from an authorized reseller, it seems like the only option for you to transact with those authorized resellers is by using crypto, either Tether, USDC, or Bitcoin, like we talked about earlier. So those are your options. And if you're like me and you're keeping a lot of your cash in a CFI platform like BlockFi or some other CFI platform, or even if you're keeping cash on an exchange like Gemini, really any sort of platform that has a withdrawal whitelist, you're going to need to keep in mind that when Compass Mining generates this address for you to send your crypto to, that address is only valid for eight hours. And so if you have a withdrawal whitelist set up, you're not going to be able to withdraw to that address from your CFI platform or from your exchange account because it's going to take you seven days to add a new withdraw address to that exchange account. And so you're going to want to either disable your withdrawal whitelist, which is a little bit of a security concern, seven days before you go to make this compass mining transaction, which is another layer of complexity that you need to navigate, or withdraw those coins from that CFI platform to a wallet that you control like a ledger or a treasure or a cold card. And then self-custodying those coins will allow you to send to any new address that you want to, and you won't have to deal with that withdrawal whitelist blocking you from sending to the address that Compass Mining generates when you go to pay in crypto. Compass is also rolling out a credit payment plan for some of the ASICs that it launches on its platform, but almost all of the ASICs that I clicked on don't have this option available. And so while this is a really attractive option, if an ASIC shows up that has the payment plan, it's not actually available on all ASICs, so definitely keep that in mind as well. Really just another reason for you to have all of that capital up front, because if you are looking for a miner to just pull the trigger on on Compass Mining, you want to be able to execute that transaction as quickly as possible so that someone else doesn't beat you to buying that miner. So if you are in the market, definitely check back on the Compass Mining website as often as possible to see if the exact miner that you're looking for has come up at a price that you're willing to pay for it. So next, let's go ahead and talk about some of the different risks that come with investing in miners from Compass Mining or just miners in general. The first risk of Compass Mining is the unit risk to your miner. Unit risk is basically the risk that the machine that you purchase breaks down early through some manufacturing defect or maybe some damage that it incurs during the logistical process of getting it plugged in. There is a one year warranty that comes with new miners. So definitely factor that warranty into the price that you're willing to pay for a used miner. However, even if that new miner that is under warranty, you know, goes down or something, you're not getting paid for the time that it takes compass mining and the facility to ship that warrantied miner off to whoever is going to fix it. And you know, it is going to be offline during that period and you are going to be losing that recurring income. So definitely keep that in mind. It's not like every single miner and every single batch of miners is going to run perfectly forever. The next risk that we're going to talk about is ASIC market risk or the Bitcoin mining machine market risk. If next year way better miners come out than a 140 terahash miner, like if next year the best miner that comes out is a 500 terahash miner, that's going to be really bad for the purchase that I made because the 500 terahash miner is going to take up way more hash power on the mining network and I'm going to be getting paid out less and less and less Bitcoin versus those single unit 500 terahash miners. However, if the best miner that comes out next year is only 145 terahashes, then my purchase that I made is going to be sort of future proofed because the less development in future ASICs, you know, the more that starts to trail off, the better the investment that you make this year will be. But if you make an investment and then the next year there's like a step function change in how efficient miners become, the miner that you bought is going to become a lesser part of the overall hash rate of the network and therefore give you less Bitcoin than 
you know, you might have expected to get. People can make estimates and guesses about this, but unless you're like a real industry insider, you're not gonna have a lot of visibility into sort of the new developments that are coming in the mining space. Next, this is a risk that comes specifically with compass mining, and that's this idea of hosting risk. Like we talked about in the previous Bitcoin mining video, not your electricity, not your miner. Your hosting provider could raise rates after a year, and your Bitcoin miner could therefore become not as profitable or not profitable at all compared to what it was before. And you're sort of at the whims of that hosting provider to some extent. There is some counterparty risk that you accept when you go to host your miner with someone else. However, there isn't really a great alternative for a lot of us retail people who don't have access to really cheap electricity, which is why compass mining is great in the first place, but it does obviously come with that counterparty risk. And then obviously there could be jurisdictional risk depending on where your mining operation is hosted. For example, right now, some of the miners that are being sold on Compass Mining, I think one of them is hosted in the United States, and then two of them that are being sold by Compass Mining are actually being hosted over in Russia. And so like, if your miner gets hosted in some unfavorable jurisdiction like Russia or California or Canada or some other unfavorable location, it's possible that like local government politics could come into play and is affecting the amount of time that your Bitcoin miner is actually producing income for you. The final risk that we're going to talk about today is the risk that you've made it all the way this far in the video and gotten all this great information and still haven't gone down below to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It's been scientifically proven that people who go down below and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm on this YouTube channel have more Bitcoin than the average human being, not financial advice. These risks that we covered are not an exhaustive list of every risk that you're assuming when you go to purchase a miner through compass mining or even do mining on your own outside of compass mining. But at a minimum, you should consider those risks that we talked about. If you want a more exhaustive list of all of the risks that come with Bitcoin mining, go down below and leave a comment and I'll start to compile a list and make a video just about that. Compass Mining also has some really helpful FAQs that I'll leave down in the description if you do wanna learn more. Also down in the description, I'll be leaving a link to Lynn Alden's analysis of Compass Mining. And so if you are unsatisfied with my analysis or if you wanna get just a second take on whether this is something that you should be looking into, definitely go check out her analysis down in the description. Another variable you should take into consideration is the online date of the miner. If you're buying a miner that's coming online next week, you might be willing to pay more for that miner versus a situation like the one that I got myself into where I purchased a miner and it's not going to come online now for like nine or 10 months after the purchase date of the miner in the first place. So like I might have gotten a good price execution for my miner, but I'm not going to be seeing any of those cash flows in Bitcoin for nine or 10 months if it comes online on time. There could be all sorts of new issues with this batch of miners. It's a new version of miner, so maybe there are defects with this version of miner that were not, you know, present in previous versions of miners that have been tested before. So there are all sorts of risks that you accept when you purchase a miner so far in advance of it coming online. And then finally, if you do go through the compass mining FAQs, they'll talk a little bit about theft insurance for your miner. That's sort of another risk that goes into like hosting risk. Like if your miner's hosted in Russia or something and some guy steals your miner and just like takes it home to Siberia and starts mining his own Bitcoin with your miner, you're sort of out of luck. So definitely check out those FAQs and do your own research before you make a final purchase decision. This video is really meant to be an introduction to compass mining for you guys. It's not meant to be the definitive final video that you should watch before you decide to spend a lot of money on something that just might not be right for you and your situation. There are just too many variables to cover when it comes to mining in one single video like this. So we've talked about a lot of risks during this video and so I wanted to end things on sort of a positive note and maybe give you guys an insight into why I did this in the first place. While there are a lot of things that could go wrong and there are a lot of risks with investing in a miner, especially through compass mining, there are some big benefits to mining over just spot buying Bitcoin. Again, this is not tax advice, but one of the big benefits of buying miners versus spot buying Bitcoin is if you're operating within the context of an LLC or really any business context, you can depreciate the value of the miner over time and you can collect those cash flows in Bitcoin as part of your business, which you can think about as allowing you to purchase this ASIC with pre-tax dollars, which obviously obviously makes the economics of buying the ASIC a lot more favorable. And then if the ASIC market continues to do what it has done in the past, your ASIC could actually retain a lot of the value that you purchased it for in the first place. And if it does run for four plus years, historically ASICs that have run for a long time have outperformed just spot buying Bitcoin with the same amount of money invested in the ASIC over time. But again, none of that is guaranteed and there are tons of risks that could take your ASIC offline before it ever gets to that long time horizon and outperforms just dollar cost averaging Bitcoin. For some additional reading and something that might
might be an attractive option for you if you're not yet ready to plunge into purchasing your own whole ASIC. Maybe you want to start with a smaller amount of money. I'll leave a recent Compass Mining blog post down in the description about allocating to mining in a Bitcoin portfolio. Again, this was written by someone with a very mining centric view of things. And so you should always consider the source of what you're reading and not take any one study as gospel or totally the truth. But the article does cover options like mining stocks, which obviously if you were buying mining stocks on something like Robinhood, you could start getting invested in those mining stocks with as little as a dollar. If you guys found this video helpful, go down below and smash the like button so that YouTube shows this video to other people who are considering compass mining as an option. And then also if you're looking for me to cover more Bitcoin mining content, like maybe a dollar cost averaging versus Bitcoin mining comparison or a deep dive on some of the risks that we covered at a high level in this video, hitting the like button is a really good signal for me to continue making content just like this. And then if there is enough interest, I will be making more mining content once my miner comes online later this year to give you guys sort of a behind the scenes look on what it's like to actually have an active miner running on compass mining. Go down below and leave a comment if you guys have any questions about any of the things that I covered in this video or feel free to DM me on Twitter if YouTube removes the comment that you post. That's it for today guys. Come back here every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern for a new video. I love you all. Goodbye.